If you're looking to get started using AI art 100% for free, then you want to check out Stable Diffusion. I've checked out a few other platforms in the past, but Stable Diffusion is a free one. You actually run it on your computer instead of using one of their servers, and it allows you to basically take more control over what you're doing because you have more technical features. And while the results are different and maybe not as good as some other platforms, like I said, it is free. It is just a little bit more technical to set up and use. So today I'm going to show you how you can download it and get started. Now to start installing is actually pretty easy. You simply go to the web page I have on the screen right now. There's a link in the description. Uh, but we simply go to that page, scroll down, and depending on what system you're using, you can download for Windows or Linux. I'm using Windows, so unfortunately I can't really show you how to use Linux or Mac, but uh, there are some instructions here. And also I will link to another page which seems to show you how to run it on Mac. But I can't say I've tried this out for myself. I will simply link to it. Otherwise, contact the guys at Stable Diffusion for a little bit more information on how to make that work. Once you've actually downloaded it to your computer, you want to extract the zip file into a folder. And then the next thing I actually do, which I didn't do the first time, is I take this file, I cut. So right click and cut and then head straight to the root directory of my drive. So within no folders, and I paste that in there. I then open this up, start Stable Diffusion UI. I click on that and you'll see it actually starts to install. And once it's installed, you'll see a bit more information here in that Stable Diffusion UI folder. I click the command and once it's installed, it will actually open up for you, but I simply click here, start Stable Diffusion UI it will open up the actual UI for you to start actually working and creating images. Now, if you want to get started, it's pretty straightforward and like most prompt, most uh, most AI art platforms, you can simply type in what you want here. So if I said a picture of a purple pig with wings, I could hit make four images with the default settings and see what results we get. So you can see here, we've got two images of purple pig. These ones are a little bit more of a pink pig, but that's essentially what we've got almost straight out of the box with some pretty default settings. Not exactly default because I have changed one or two settings in the past, but that's pretty much what you'll get with the default settings. Now, you'll one thing to keep in mind is this took about five minutes or so to render because my computer actually created these images using their algorithm. It's not like Mid Journey and, and say Dali where the server will actually render the image this is actually rendered on your computer, which is one of the reasons why it's free. You're not using up server resources. You can, there's a few different options here. We can upscale this from here. We can draw another 25 steps, which I'll sort of cover. Basically, this is 25 steps to create this image. It starts from your sort of like the seed and creates a bunch of steps to create this image. And we can take it steps further, but it doesn't necessarily add detail. It gets to a point where it simply starts to change the image. So I'm gonna show you how that looks soon. But um, first of all, I'm gonna cut over here to the left to some settings and just run through a little bit of how this works. So I'm gonna zoom in. You can see we've got an image on the right here. And we've got image settings. So this seed, I can actually turn this off and keep the same seed as last time. The seed is the starting point of the image. You'll most likely get similar results if you keep the same seed, but we're going to keep it at random for now. And at the moment, it took a little while because I was rendering four images in total and it was doing two at a time. So to speed up the video, we're going to do one image at a time and just one image in total. Now here, if you have other models installed, you can change the model of Stable Diffusion. A little bit more info for another video, uh, but I'm still learning about that myself. But I, at the moment, I'm using Stable Diffusion version 1.4. Now, custom VAE is just like a little extra add-on. If I use this, which is bundled with Stable Diffusion, I believe it fixes things like eyes, just uh, helps sort of make parts of the image a little better. The sampler, still not 100% sure what this does, but it just creates slightly different images if you choose different samplers. But where people are going to get most interest out of is things like the image size. So at the moment, I'm creating 512 by 512. I could crank this up to 2048 by 2048 and create massive images. But the problem is I tried to do that on my computer and it actually stalled and didn't work. So I've been sticking to 512 by 512 knowing that I can go over here to upscale my image when I'm ready. Now the inference steps, we can up that. Like I said, if I add more steps, it will simply change the image a little bit. So we're not going to we'll keep that at 25 for now, and I'm going to simply use draw another 25 steps over here. So the other thing is the guidance scale. If I feel these images weren't close enough to what I wanted, I can increase this. 
and it will follow my prompt more directly. So let's double the guidance scale this time to see what we get. Uh, I'm not sure about hyper network, but the output format, we can choose a JPEG or a PNG image and we can get that JPEG image quality up. Now when we come down to render settings, we can show a live preview so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna keep that turned off. Now, in another video, I've talked about GFP GAN, which is a software which fixes faces and eyes. If you're rendering a face, you can turn that on and automatically apply GFP GAN to your images. And you can also upscale the image by four by using the, these two engines here. But the issue with that is I am, I found it doesn't work as good as simply creating a smaller image and then upscaling it. And then you don't get the opportunity to actually click upscale on the images I've done at least here when I use that. So I tend to leave that off knowing that I can just simply click upscale on my image when I'm ready. Now there's a few more things you can set here like uh, some styles. So you can go through those and add those in to choose a particular style for your image. But this, all this does is actually modify your prompt a little bit. So basically it's, it's a great way to start when you're a beginner and we're gonna still explore these in a minute. But otherwise, it's pretty much pop your prompt in there and let's see what we get with these settings with the higher guided scale, a little bit more of a modifier and uh, see what we get. Let's click make image and see what Stable Diffusion creates. And while Stable Diffusion is creating that image, we're also going to upscale this pig and draw another 25 steps. And what's really cool is it will simply queue these jobs in here and you can simply create a queue of images. So basically I can create up to, I've had like up to 10 things queued in the past. So you can set things up, walk away, come back in an hour or two and have a bunch of images ready to go and then upscale or save or do what you wanna do from there. So let's see what results we get by skipping ahead. So this was our original image and we've re-entered another image with the guidance scale cranked up and we've got this, which is not very good. So I will be bringing the guidance scale. So the guidance scale here was 15. You can see the settings at the top, whereas the guidance scale here, scale here was 7.5. So something worth considering is actually that guidance scale is something to play with if you want to try and work with those results a bit, but this is a little bit too off the deep end for me personally. Now this image is actually this image upscaled. So I hadn't actually got very good results from that. If you actually tab across, you can see the image is quite big, but it's actually nothing like the original image. And that is the odd problem, which even though I mentioned earlier, I prefer this way of doing it. I have had that issue a few times where the upscale hasn't matched the original. So it's a bit of a weird sort of situation that Stable Diffusion has going on there with that. But when we've drawn our next 25 steps, you can see here, 50 steps, it's actually taken it to a completely different level again and changed it again. So it can be a little bit hit and miss, I feel, with Stable Diffusion uh, and the images you get, but still a lot of fun to play with, uh, especially when you work out, play with some of these other settings. So we're gonna do one more by coming down here to Art Styles, and we're gonna go down, choose a visual style such as Art Nouveau, add that to our prompt, and you can see it added here. I'm gonna put our guidance scale back to 7.5 and we're gonna click make image and then see what kind of results we get by adding in those image modifiers. Now check out the result, something pretty cool, a little bit different. And again, we can go ahead and upscale this and see what results we get that way. Now in this instance, you can see that the upscale has turned out really quite good and very similar to the previous one, a bit cleaner and obviously a much larger, higher resolution image that uh, I think is a little bit more impressive than the last example we did. But another cool feature, not just the styles and everything we have here down the left, we've got anime styles as you can see, which is pretty cool, but there's so many different styles here to try. So I do recommend experimenting with the settings and the styles to see what results you get. But when I get back to the top here, there's another really cool feature here, image to image. So if I hit browse, I can find, I've got these images here of me, I can take this image open it up and then I can actually use it. So I can say a man with a beard and sunglasses and I can hit make image. But while we're at it, I can also draw on this image or in paint. So I can actually go draw and maybe I want to draw the sunglasses area on there. Although maybe I want to use black and I can kind of draw sunglasses as to where I would like it. And I can also then save that 
and then hit impaint, which means I can actually remove certain areas. So maybe I decide I want to go full opacity and just remove the background. Click save. And now I can say a bit of sunglasses in the sky in queue next image. Although I do have this image modifier I don't want, I'm gonna remove that and in queue the next image. So you can see the result we've had with this image. Since we had that art modifier on, it has modified things a little bit from my original picture, but uh, it's essentially used as reference as to, I guess it's kind of copied some of my look, applied the art modifier to it, which is the art nouveau, and created this, which I think is, uh, it's pretty interesting. But we're gonna see what adding in the sunglasses with the drawing and the in painting has created. Now, funnily enough, I've actually made a mistake here. It's actually impainted the image, but kept the drawing on there. So I do think I need to separate these two. So we'll quickly go back and try again. We will turn off the impainting and we'll start fresh by adding in this, a new image. And we'll start with impaint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to remove my eyes again and my ears and click save. And this time I'm gonna say man with a beard and massive eyes and pointy ears. And let's see what result we get in painting on this image once I've removed the eyes and the ears. Now by using the in painting, we've got this photo of me and we've replaced the eyes and the ears and uh, it looks a little bit funny to be honest, but uh, you can see how the in painting is a great way to replace and add AI elements to existing pics. So next, if I turn the in painting off and use the same image, I can go into draw and I can say red and give myself this red area here and maybe even green around the beard. And I'm going to, it looks pretty ugly, but I'm going to save that. And you can see our image here. And I'm going to say man with a green beard and red hair. And let's see what results we get with our drawn image and that extra modifier. I can see what it has created. A man with red hair and a green beard. It's kind of copied the uh, framing of the shot and you can see how you can get some pretty interesting results by using the drawing over an image to sort of guide the AI into making something. So we're gonna get rid of that one and now there's actually a draw function. If you click on the draw function, you can actually draw something and use it on your images. So I've recorded one I did earlier. You can see the aspect ratio is a little bit different and I've created a real rough, very rough drawing and we're gonna see what results we get playing with this feature. So check out these results. They're a little bit messed up, some of them, but it has adhered to my drawing pretty well, but smoothed out some of the bits and pieces we don't wanna keep. So you can see how with a little bit of uh, time playing with this, you can create some pretty cool effects. Now, before we wrap up, I want to show you a few settings. You go up the top tab here to settings, and there's a lot of settings here, and I'm not going to go through all of them uh, because this is just a beginner's video, and I'm actually not really an advanced user of Stable Diffusion yet, but I do understand enough to sort of go through some of this stuff. Theme, obviously, you can go through and change the look of what you're using. I don't think that's really important, but something you could check out. But what I really wanted to let you know about is auto save images. I have been able to set this up so they auto save to a folder on my computer. I actually even save to my Dropbox folder so that way anything I created is backed up on the cloud. So turning that on is really handy so every time you create an image is automatically getting saved on your computer. And you can even set up a little sound that makes a little ding noise when you have finished which is pretty cool so I know when images are being done and you can choose to process the newest jobs first instead of in the chronological order in which you have set them up. A few other settings here just for performance is things like turbo mode, Use so you know, you'll generate faster but use more memory. You can choose to use a CPU instead of your GPU but it will slow things down. And you can go through and just try out and check out some of these settings if you want to change the way your computer handles things. And if you want to get a hold of the more recent sort of uh, algorithms I have, you can turn on beta channel. You do have to restart and I haven't actually played with that one yet but Pretty cool, I've been playing a lot with this and I get this folder full of images, which I think is really cool and worth doing if you're someone who wants to generate a lot of art, which if you're looking to start for free, you probably are. So that's pretty much it. I've just been playing a little bit further, but uh, check out Stable Diffusion. Uh, as I learn more, I may or may not create more videos on this. Uh, I'm sort of been more involved with Mid Journey, but um, it's really cool to check out these other platforms and see what results we can get and what other options we have at our disposal. And, Stable Diffusion is definitely a really cool 
our platform. So thanks for watching the video. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.